Great to see everybody this morning. Um, thank you for being in worship. Welcome. Welcome those in the sanctuary with me this morning and those watching online as well. Um, if I haven't met you before, my name is Tanya Kowalski. I'm a lay leader here and excited to be in fellowship with you this morning. We have some announcements and some of these announcements you have probably heard already, but that's okay. It's always good to hear it again. And most of them are also in your yellow inserts inside your bulletin today if you're in service with them. So first one, um, office volunteers. For those of you who have been familiar with our church for a while, you might remember back we used to have people who volunteer in the office sometimes during the day and answer phones or get mailings ready. We kind of went away from that during COVID, but we're bringing it back. So if you have time during the day um, or, or whenever you have time, just check with the office staff, Kristen, and, and they'll get you set up um, to help with that. Stream volunteers. So we have amazing people doing our stream today, Tony and and Lisa, but, and, and I was given the instructions for it, and I was so glad they showed up because I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get it right. And truth be told, at the first service, I forgot to turn on one of the microphones, so we're all learning. Um, so always looking for new people. If that's something that you think you could learn, it's actually once you do it once or twice, it becomes, I imagine, um, pretty easy. And there's amazing instructions, so um, an, an easy way to serve at church. Um, senior by, time by seniors, still happening, uh, first and third Tuesdays. At 11, the next one will be November 7th. If you ever want more information about that, you can contact Barb Munson. She kind of heads that up. Um, our rummage sale, you may have noticed when you came in this morning that our church looks a little shambles, right? There's stuff everywhere um, because we're having our <clears throat> rummage sale this week. Um, I'm going to say I've been battling a cold all week, so I'll do the best I can with my voice. Um, bear with me if I'm, I'm coughing. I will not be shaking everybody's hands afterwards because I don't want to get everybody else sick. But, so don't think I'm being rude today or that I'm not with it. I'm just battling this uh, cold. I've been battling all week. But the rummage sale, um, yeah, so if you can help with that, especially after church service today, if you have even like 20 minutes to stick around, they're going to be trying to um, unload and place some things. So um, it's a great thing that our church does. And some people really in the community look forward to it every year. So let's make that happen. Not like Sundays. Um, if, you, if you've been familiar with what, how we're doing it this year, it's a little different. We do the first Wednesday of every month is our Open Door, door Bistro, but then the third Sunday of the month is Potluck, and that's after this service. And um, the next one will be November 12th, and um, um, so you can just bring a dish to pass, have fellowship, have a good time. Anyone's welcome. So it's, I think it's really fun that we're doing that now. What's next? Oh yeah, meet and greet. So when we like to have those treats after service, we like to have coffee and maybe a brownie. I'm always looking for people to do that. It's super easy. That is one thing that I do know how to do and I can say is super easy. Um, so um, there's a sign up out there in the gathering area. If you ever want to make coffee and set the treats out, we'd appreciate it. And this is a big deal, a chili cook-off. Oh my gosh, you guys, right? Yeah, you're ready, aren't you? Or, yeah, she's ready. So this is November 1st. So this is our open door, door bistro this month is a chili cook-off. And I was told, a little bird told me, there's going to be voting and there is a prize. 
So I think when I announced this a few weeks ago, I wasn't sure if there was a prize. I have learned that there is. So please come and enjoy and test out and vote on the chili. Um, and um, that'll be, I think that'll be really exciting. I plan on being here. Holiday Fest. Um, there is a board in the narthex. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's lit up. Um, looking always for people. It can be something as simple as bringing in a can of corn to I'll park people in the parking lot um, that day. So there's lots of jobs. There's lots of ways to volunteer and help um, and give. Um, there is usually someone out there. Jean was out there earlier, and I'm assuming going to be out there again afterwards. She also has yard signs. Um, that is a great way that we advertise this for almost low cost is our yard signs. And there's little instructions on there when to put out in your yard and when to take it down. Um, so please think about helping with that. Remember, that is a fundraiser for our church. Anything else I should add about that, Jean? I get lots of things needed still and it'll be here before we know it too November 11th is not far away um, so there's lots of um, opportunities to grow in your discipleship here at church we have our women's Bible study that'll meet this week the 31st fly high is a group that works uh, meets on Friday mornings that'll be this Friday on the third um, there's also a prayer breakfast that Tim has started if, if you went to the first one I heard it was it went really well I wasn't able to go to the first one, but I will be at, at this November one. Um, just a really neat new thing he's trying. He did it at a different church where he um, was appointed, and I think it's a nice opportunity. It's early in the morning, so even if you have something else to do that day, you can swing by and be part of that. Um, our Bible study has been going on, and it's different. If you've been going to, you, it's, it's not as much of a Bible study as it, we've been studying John Wesley's life. And so it's kind of interesting to learn, um, you know, the person who founded our faith and kind of got things going for the United Methodist. And it doesn't matter if you haven't come to it before and you're available, you know, this Wednesday. It doesn't build on the week before necessarily. We just kind of look at each different section of his life and learn about why he did what he did and how we got to where we are today. So you can join us in person or on Zoom Wednesday at 6. Um, and there's always opportunity for our, our little ones here. We have chapel time right in that see-through room right there. Um, during the service and you have youth group for our teens and teens um, on the first and third Wednesday of every month Our interfaith food pantry if you've ever helped out with that You know how a much needed resource it is the line goes all the way around the building for that There are people in our community who depend on that and we are nice enough to help with that So if you have time second and fourth Tuesdays, you can contact Peggy Selk um, if you want more information about it um, to help volunteer and pass out food our All Saints Day service will be next Sunday, November 5th, and this is a time for us to remember those who have passed on since last year, who are no longer with us, family members, friends, neighbors. If you want someone in, that you know honored during that service, please let the church office know. And this is exciting. The Good News Singers are coming back. So that's like our children's choir. We say it's ages 2 to 12 plus, but really I don't think we'd kick anybody out. So um, if there's a little person in your life or you are a little person, and you want to sing, um, we're going to rehearse right before church services on Sunday morning, so come be a part of that, and that's going to start next week. And our loose coin offering this month is going to the Ghana Mission, so um, if you give money to that in the loose coin offering, there's a, a tray out in the gathering area there, that'll go to our Ghana trip that's happening in January. And then say the date. This is kind of interesting, um, if, if you don't know. So we're having a very special concert here on November 15th. And it will be from 6.30 to 8. It's a free concert. And there's going to be some, like, um, refreshments and too. Um, but what it is, it's a Korean choir and an African choir um, will be performing here. And, and I don't know all the details, and, and maybe Lauren knows more. I don't know. Um, but what I've been told is there's going to be, I wouldn't call it a worship service, but there's going to be some discussion or, like, a message and it's a little bit about the um, journey and how it's gone for Korean people and African people assimilating and coming to this country. And is that, am I explaining it right, Lauren? Because um, Tim just shared um, with me briefly about it the other day. Um, and then they're going to sing songs. So the other exciting thing about this night is the bishop is coming. So if you've ever seen or heard our bishop, Bishop Young, you know he's a very um, passionate speaker, right? I don't think if I've ever seen him angry. Um, he's always happy, and if, if you want to get charged up for Jesus, listen to him. So, um, so hopefully people can make that, um, and we can be a really nice um, host for that really cool event. Um, so with that then, um, I would welcome John up. He is our liturgist this morning to lead us on the call to worship, and I'd ask you to please stand and respond to the parts that are bolded in the bulletin.
Gracious God, eternal God, you have led us to curiosity about our creation, ourselves, and all things unknown. Let us never lose our sense of wonder about the world you have given us. God of Abraham and Sarah, you led us to new understandings when we least expect them. Let us never see ourselves as too young, too old, or too wise to learn new lessons from you. God of the prophets, you call us to speak truth with love to a reluctant world. Give us courage to judge ourselves and wisdom to learn from those you send to teach us. God of the rich young ruler, you love us though we shrink from the challenge of discipleship. Teach us to surrender our wills that we might seek yours and draw closer to your grace. Everlasting, ever-loving God, teacher, creator, giver of knowledge and freedom, grant that we might always use your gifts to build a world where peace, justice, love, and hope reign in wisdom and in truth. Amen. Thy great glory. 
Our scripture lesson for this morning is from Colossians 3, verses 7, 5, or yeah, 15 through 17. And it's found in the New Testament on page 201. That's 201 of your Pew Bible. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thank you, John. Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the book of John. Um, if you're following along in the Pew Bibles, it's page 109, I believe, in the New Testament. Um, hear these words. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And now we welcome any people who want to come up for Young Disciples Time with Miss Laura. All right. Good morning. Come on up. So glad to see you all. I'm going to have you just sit right on the floor here. I'm going to sit on the floor too. And so we can just look at each other. So I'm going to have you sit in front of me and look at me. Okay. Thank you. So I'm glad that you are here with me. And if you are with us online, I'm glad that you are there as well. So my question for you all this morning is, do you like to take walks? It's a pretty simple question. Anybody? like to take walks. Yeah, I think maybe most of us like to take walks. You like to walk with your dogs? I like to walk with my nephew. Well, that's good. I love those. I love that you do that and that you like to do that. Because there's, you know, taking a walk, there's always interesting things to see along the way, right? And it feels good to be outside. And walking is not only good for your dogs, but it's good for you. It's good for all of us. Get your steps in. Absolutely, Aurora. It's really good for us. So it, it's good for our bodies. It's good for our spirits, our minds, right? It makes us feel good all over. And so let's see. Um, so you like to walk your dogs and with your nephew, the baby, right? Yeah. Anybody else have places that they like to walk? Any special places? To the park. The park's a great place. Across the road. To school. Yeah. Yeah, those are all really great places. You know, I like to walk, like when I go on a trip somewhere, like maybe if I'm by a lake. You do too. I love that. Along the shoreline. Um, I like to walk in my neighborhood too. And this time of year, I really like to walk, you know, kind of in the woods because the leaves are really pretty on the trees. They're down a lot now, but yes, like fall. And sometimes if it's not too wet, the leaves are crunchy and it smells really good. And did you know that the Bible teaches us to walk in love? Walk in love. What do you think that means? Walk in love. What do you think? Because, like, take the animals. Okay. Yeah, care for, yeah, maybe care. Like, yeah, being kind. So I've been, like, working on this list. So here's my list. 
and like what that might mean to walk in love. So let's see, I have be kind to one another. These are things I thought of so far. Help each other, Help each other. forgive one another, be thankful for all God has given us. Then I have learning and playing, praying, well, playing and praying, and singing as a way to honor God. And I think it also means letting the peace of God rule in our hearts, because the Bible says that too. That's part of what we heard this morning in, in our scripture readings. So I think that wherever we go, we can walk in God's love. No matter where we're walking, where we're at, we can walk in God's love. What do you think? Shall we pray together? You would join me. And also I invite everyone here to join us. Okay. So this is like a, an echo prayer. So I'm going to say part of it. And I invite everybody to, to just repeat after me. Okay. Dear God. Thank you for always being with us. Wherever we are. And wherever we go. Thank you for your love. Help us to show and share your love with others. And all God's people say, Amen. Awesome. Well, now you are all invited. We're going um, to talk more about this and have some activities. So I'm going to be in the chapel. You're invited to come into the chapel. Thank you, Laura. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> recently, I did something I've never done before. I took, like, a cross-country train trip. Has anyone ever done one of those where you go through, like, overnight even on the train? Yeah. Um, I took the California Zephyr, which actually starts in Buffalo. I didn't get on in Buffalo. Um, I kind of went on the halfway point. I got on in Chicago, and I went to go visit my friend who lives in Denver, Colorado. And so I... I rode on the train from Chicago to um, Colorado. And I, you know, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, and so I've taken the train in the city, little trains like that. But I had never taken one of those big trains that goes, and I'm not a rich person, so I did not have one of those sleeper cars. So I was kind of, you know, in my seat, and it was okay. I mean, it was better than an airplane seat um, for sleeping. But So I went through Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska, and then ended up in Colorado. <clears throat> But one thing I didn't count on, because I had never done this before, was how big and amazing the windows and the views are on those trains. And they even have one car, one section of the train that's called the observation car, and it's all glass windows. And I was, holy cow, all the things I could see through there. And I could not believe all the beautiful landscapes I saw. And I actually have some pictures here. That's one of them. And I'll say, they probably look better on that screen, but these aren't the best quality pictures because I would literally have my cell phone up to a fast-moving train. It was the best I could do. But So that's really pretty, I thought. There's another one. Amber waves of grain. More farmland. And that was as I was coming into Denver. There's a little bridge there. But as I was going through and seeing all these landscapes, I kind of understood the whole, like, America the Beautiful song, you know? Like, I really saw the beauty of our, I had not been out that far west before, um, especially on a train. But when I was going through it, and I was looking at it, and I noticed a lot, well, a lot of what you see is, is agriculture on that stretch of, of land. A lot of farming. And when I was looking at the farms and, and the different farmland I saw as I passed, I realized it's quite a bit different than the farming and the ag that we have here in Wisconsin, particularly in Portage County. A few differences I noticed was one, and this is probably the most predominant, was so much corn. So much corn. Iowa and Nebraska really know how to grow corn. And I grew up in Illinois, like in my college, was in the middle of a cornfield, so I thought I knew about corn. I had no idea. Vast, vast countrysides of corn. And, and all the, the crop farms in general were just huge, much bigger, I feel like, than we have here. Because here, like, when I was a preacher at Coloma, for, 
two, for two years, I, I preached down there every Sunday, and I drive from Point to Coloma back and forth, and you'd look out the window and you see all kinds of farms, and you can see usually the, the house or one of the buildings, an outbuilding, and then the land. But when I was taking this train trip, I never saw buildings. Like their property was just so vast and so huge, you couldn't even find where the, where the main building was or the, or the house, the people who lived there. There's so much more space, right? And so they have so much, much bigger land. Another thing that I noticed was um, they have beef cattle farms instead of dairy farms. And we're so proud of our dairy farms here, aren't we? And we see so many of them. And I didn't see any going out that way. And I looked quickly and learned quickly that those are beef cattle farms. So they look a lot different, too, than our dairy farms. I have to say, I don't think the cows are nearly as happy as our dairy cows here because they don't have near as much room to move around in. And the other thing I thought was kind of interesting, and this might have just been the area I was in, I don't know, but there was a lot of white barns. Like here where our barns are typically like red or sometimes you'll see like a blue. And there were a lot of white barns. I thought that was kind of cool. So as I was going through this and noticing all these differences, I was kind of proud of myself that I could kind of compare and contrast our agriculture and how we do things compared to these farms out west. Because you see, when I first moved here, I knew nothing about agriculture, nothing about farming. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. There's not a lot of farms there. In fact, when I first moved to Wisconsin, I had never seen a real life cow. And I couldn't wait. And I thought they were going to be like squirrels, like in your yard everywhere. Because they really hype it up to be a dairy state. And I got here, and I have to say I was a little disappointed when I had been here for a few months, and I had yet to even see one cow. So I quickly learned they're not all over the streets in the yard like squirrels are. But something really great happened. The Rochalt Fair. And if you've ever been to the Rochalt Fair, you know that's where you go to see animals, right? I was all in. I must have spent over an hour in the animal barns because I wanted to look at every single one. It was like a field trip for me. And finally I got to where the cows were and I walked right up to this lady cow and looked her right in the face. She was beautiful, big eyes. I said, hello, honey. And she sneezed <laughs> all over me. I had no idea how much snot could come from, and I, oh, and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is awful. And the 4-H kids are laughing at me, right? They're like, where is this lady from, right? One of them was nice and got me a paper towel, but the other ones just didn't even get up. They were laughing at me. So needless to say, in my 27 years of living here, I know a little bit more than when I first moved here. I know that especially in Portage County, we're the largest agriculture producer in the entire state. The whole Golden Sands thing is, is a description of our soil and why it can grow certain crops that other places you can't grow. We lead the nation and soybeans, snap peas, and potato production. Speaking of potatoes, I'm going to get off track a little bit here. Raise your hand if you've ever been to Heartland Farms in Hancock. Have you been there, Dennis? Have you been inside that computer room? Oh, it's, <laughs> you work there, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about then. So if you've ever been there, they are completely computerized. Like, everything is digital and computerized. They have everything is from the water that they give to the soil levels to the growing everything. And they're a major grower for Lay's, especially like the little bags that like you put like in a lunch. You can take a little bag of Lay's and go to Heartland Farms. They can scan the barcode on the, on the bag of potato chips and tell you when that potato plant was planted, how much water it got, when it was harvested, everything. Isn't that phenomenal? And you might know, if you're a grower for someone like Lay's or Del Monte, we had quite a few growers in Coloma for Del Monte, they control everything for you. They tell you when to plant, what seeds to use, how to water, when to harvest, and you have to follow it to a T, or you don't get that contract again. So if you have to harvest this week, whether you have workers or not, or the weather's good or not, you have to harvest that week. And that's why it's so hard to be a farmer. So with all this knowledge, I was really proud writing the California Zephyr that I could compare and contrast. But then I was humbled for a moment, because what it made me realize is, I don't know anything about any other agriculture. I just know about the stuff here in Portage County. I wasn't expecting all that corn. I wasn't expecting those beef cattle farms to look like that. I realized I don't know anything about agriculture anywhere else in the United States. Wow, I've got a lot to learn, don't I? 
Because if I was so excited and learned so much just about the agriculture here in our area, imagine how much more I could learn if I studied it for other areas. That's how our faith journey goes. That's what being a disciple of Christ means. Always learning. It's not a one-time thing. It's not like you go to a Bible study once or you go to a small group or you go to vacation Bible school and you're like, okay, I'm good, I'm full up. I've learned all there is to know. Or you get baptized or you get confirmed or you join a church as an adult and you're like, okay, I'm good. No. It's ongoing throughout our life. There's so many opportunities to learn more, to learn more about what God wants us to know and the stuff he wants us to do throughout our entire life. Because imagine if we were to stop learning in the very beginning. Like maybe you heard the story of Jonah and the whale or Noah and the ark and David and Goliath. And you heard those and you're like, yep, I got it. I know what the Bible's about and I know what God's about. And they're good stories and they describe God's miraculous ways and his love and his power. But that's not everything. Because if we would have stopped with just those Bible stories, we would have never considered the more complex issues that are brought up in the Bible. You would have never imagined the, the questioning, um, uncertainty, and possible shame that Mary and Joseph felt when they were traveling back to his hometown, pregnant and unmarried. If you would have stopped at Noah and, and the early Bible stories that you learned maybe as a child, you wouldn't have the time to imagine Jochebed, the mother of Moses, making the hardest decision of her life as she sent her son off down the river hoping that he would have a better life. You wouldn't take time to analyze the story of the Good Samaritan and wonder why doesn't the innkeeper get more credit or talked about more because he's really the one who looked after and healed this stranger when they were dropped off at his door. Can you imagine what a small view you'd have of the Bible and the lessons that we need to learn if we would have just stopped learning and not reached out for more wisdom? Because maybe it started for you in a Sunday school class and when you started learning about Jesus and God and all those stories and parables and things. Or maybe it was in confirmation when you really got a handle on what our faith is and what Methodism is. Or maybe you were an adult in life when you came to the church. Maybe today's your first day ever walking foot in a church and you may never come back. That's okay. Doesn't matter where you started. That's just not where you stop. This is just another step in the way and the long path that we have of being a disciple of Christ. We have an ongoing relationship with God, and it's our responsibility to be the best partner in that relationship that we can. To learn and grow with God, to listen to what he is telling us and needs us to hear. So how do we do that? How do we continually learn more? How do we like, stretch ourselves as disciples? There is a few ways. First, we can be in community together. Attending worship like this, attending a small group, um, going to one of our church events, whatever it is for you. But being in fellowship and being in community with one another is a great way to learn. You always learn something from someone else. Another thing we can do is work with the mission project in a new or different way. Like maybe there's something here, um, Project Fresh Clothes or Holiday Baskets um, that you've never done before, never been a part of. Or you have, but now you want to serve in a different way. There's a trip going to Ghana in January. Sue Jacobson and I am going along with John Munson and people from other churches, but us three will be representing this church. And I've never done anything like that before. But we're taking a chance and we're doing it to stretch ourselves. Another thing you can do is maybe switch up how you're studying the word. So maybe you have certain scriptures that you always go back to, that you have memorized, that you love, that are familiar. But maybe if you're someone like me who never reads the book of Numbers, because maybe we should read Numbers. Or maybe pick up that upper room that we give out for free all the time. And then every day there's something for you to read. Maybe it's a scripture you've never heard before. 
or do a Bible study or join a group that you've never joined before and learn a different way to hear and see the word. Maybe one day way you do it is changing up or enhancing your prayer time. Some people look, always pray first thing when they wake up, or they do before they go to bed at night, or they pray at their coffee break in the middle of the afternoon, or whatever it is. Um, when I used to teach youth group in um, Illinois, we talked about, we taught the kids how to pray like ACTS, like the book of the Bible, ACTS. And so it's an acronym that stands for Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. So you pray in that order. So first is adoration, you give praise and glory to God. And next is confession, that's where you talk about ways we might have fallen short this week, or this day. And T is thanksgiving, so you mention all the things you're thankful and, gl thankful and grateful and blessed for. And then the S is supplication, and that's when you get to ask for things. That should be the last of your prayer, is asking for things. And I, another thing I, I do, and I think I've shared it here before, is a five-finger prayer. So if you picture your hands, you know, like this, if you're praying like a little kid, kind of, and your thumb is pointing to your heart. So on your thumb, you pray for those closest to you, your friends and your family and your loved ones and your neighbors. The pointer finger is directing. So you pray for people who have director roles, like teachers, coaches, pastors and leaders. The middle finger is the strongest and tallest figure, finger, and so you pray for those who are in government and leadership positions in our city, state, nation, and world. The ring finger is the weakest of all the fingers. It's weaker than the pinky. It is. So we pray for people who are marginalized, who's had their voice taken away, or justice robbed from them, who are weak and need our strength. And then the last one's the pinky, and that's when you get to come in and pray for what you want and what you need. We save that for last. You can strengthen your discipleship or, or continue on your journey by um, increasing your offerings or giving more of your time and talents, um, volunteering in different areas of the church. We read off a bunch of volunteer opportunities just this morning. For worship and programming. There's not one way, there's not one answer on how we keep learning with God. But we do have to do something. We don't just stop learning. We don't just stop with the knowledge we have here and now. Because just like my very limited knowledge of agriculture, we have a lot to learn about our relationship with Christ and our job as a disciple. So in closing, I thought it'd be fun to have a little Bible trivia. And don't worry, this isn't like to judge, like, who knows the most about the Bible? I'm not that kind of person. And this also isn't school, so you don't have to raise your hand. So if you know the answer, just shout it out, okay? I have to tell you, the first service did pretty good at this. There's only three questions, so it's not bad. The prophet Elisha was bald, and some children teased him for it. How were they punished for their rudeness? Yeah, who, who said that first? Yeah, they were eaten by bears. Oh, don't we love the good news of the Bible, right? So severe. Yeah, in 2 Kings they tell that story. So don't tease anybody about not having enough hair because God will send the bears to eat you. Okay, you guys are doing good. All right, next one. In the Garden of Eden, we are told that the serpent speaks to Eve and tempts her with the fruit. What other animal literally speaks to a human in the Bible? Oh, you guys all knew that. Yes, the donkey. That's a number. It's the book that I didn't read, right? Yes, it's during Balaam, and he has a life-changing moment, and God sends word through the donkey, and the donkey speaks to him. All right, last one. St. Paul must have not been a very inspiring preacher, because during one of his sermons, and thank goodness this hasn't happened to me yet, a member in the audience dozed off and fell out the window to their death. They were like on the second story. Well, yeah, it's a bad day in church when you fall out of the window out of boredom and die. So, what is the name of that person? Oh, I got you guys stumped for these. It's Eutiches. The good news is, unlike the children with the bear in the first question, St. Paul was not a person who held grudges. So he asked God to revive 
Yutiki's back to life, and he was brought to life again. So, ended on a good note for that one. But that's a good lesson just to pay attention when we're up here talking, when Tim and I are up here, because you just never know. So as we leave this place today, I just challenge you this, to find a way to keep learning and growing. I heard a quote that once said once, when you stop learning, you start dying. Right? And so, whether it's whatever it is in your life, you always want to be learning more and digging a little bit deeper and stretching yourself, and especially with your relationship with God, find a new way to um, just be a better student, if you will, of our faith, to be a better disciple. And not that what we're doing right now isn't great, but always reaching to see if we can just do a little bit more. And to that, I think we can say, amen. We're going to sing a hymn together, and in the bulletin, it's printed wrong. It says 385. It's actually 395. We do that to keep everybody on their toes. Um, but the words will be on the screen anyway. So we'll sing 395, which is Take Time to Be Holy. I got new batteries, so I'm back on. I bet you're all thrilled, huh? Like, oh, great, we can hear Tanya even louder now. Yay. We're just getting our Facebook feed up here, our live stream, to see if people want to send in any prayers, because one way we're active disciples is by caring and loving and praying on one another, right? So we take time each week to lift up um, joys and celebrations so we can celebrate and clap and applaud one another, um, and also concerns and fears and hurt so we can comfort and pray on um, and envelope one another. So I do have some prayers from um, earlier services and from the church this week that I'll share first. Um, and then um, John's in the back ready with the microphone. Um, we'll come around if you have any um, share, prayers to share. So the ones that have been shared already, get my prayers out here. Um, continued prayers for Karen Phelps. She would love cards. Um, you can send them to the Riverview Assisted Living at 1800 Sherman Avenue, number 132. And that's here in Stevens Point, and that is the 54481. And again, I, I can give this address or the church office can after the service if, you're, if you don't have anything to write it down. But if you have time to send a card, Karen would love it. 
Um, Joseph and Ghana wants to thank Dr. John Munson and the mission team for their generosity, kindness, love, empathy, and compassion shown to his orphanage home. John Wiltsey asked for prayers for wisdom and ease um, as he's dealing with his sister's estate since she passed away. I know that's never easy, um, dealing with a loved one's estate, John. Prayers for new refugee families in town. One particular family is struggling to get settled and have their needs met, so let's lift them up and see how we can help that happen. Prayers for those who have loved ones in Palestine and Israel. We pray for their safety and the safety of all those who live in those areas. Um, the mission team will be sending out a list soon asking for donations um, for what they can bring to the orphanage in their local clinic. As I mentioned before, there's a few of us going on a trip in January, so John Munson's going to be giving a list um, of donations, and there'll be a, a box or a basket out there where the donations can be placed. So John Munson, thanks everyone in advance if you're able to assist with that effort, and please pray for the team for a safe trip. Prayers for the victims of the mass shooting in Maine. We pray for their families and for the safety of law enforcement and townspeople. And we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Let's see if there's any on our feed. We have a lot of good mornings from people. Good morning to all of you, too. Thanks for tuning in here. I don't see any prayer requests online, so I'd welcome it up to people here in the sanctuary. If we've got joys or concerns we want to lift up, yeah, Kathy. Um, more prayers for Karen. She's back at the hospital with some seizures now, so it's um, pretty scary, and uh, her brother has asked for prayers. Also, I want to put a plug in, since Tim's not here, for his Thursday morning prayer uh, breakfast. Um, last time, he had three people, Jim and I and Heather, were there, and if we hadn't showed up, he would have been there alone with all that food, and he had communion all ready to go. So please come on Thursday morning at 7. It's a great way to start your day, and, um, and he goes to a lot of preparation for us, and it was very meaningful to start our day with prayer together. So please come. Thank you, Kathy. Thomas Coke Room. Let's go over here. Prayers for Arby Crawford. Uh, she celebrated her 91st birthday on Saturday, and she's doing well. Thank you. Lift up, Arby. Uh, good morning. I've got two. Uh, last week we prayed for our neighbor, and he has gone downhill. He has now been... Uh, sent to Fredert in Milwaukee and is in critical care there. So continued prayer for him. And then uh, actually a prayer of joy. Um, our refugee family has been here since the end of May. And with all the new things that they are eating, they're growing. Right, Jackie? And um, little Patrice is not little. And he has outgrown his bed. <laughs> now that sounds weird, but he can't sleep in his bed anymore because either his head or his feet stick out of his bed. <laughs> So we are looking for an extra long twin bed. If anybody has access to one, we have been searching and have not been able to find him. So the poor guy's been sleeping on the couch and that's not good with, and he is also, the good news is he got a job. So we're super excited. So we have three people in that family working already. So, and they are doing absolutely great. Um, the schools have been praising their, just the amount of work that they do and they are doing absolutely fabulous. So a uh, round of applause for those kiddos who are working really, really hard. I agree, Mary. I, I've been subbing in the school district for the first time this year, and I've seen some of those kiddos in my classes and had my eye on them, and they have been the best kids in all my classes. I might be a little biased, but I'm just saying. Mary, I can't have, let you have the last word. Um, so Patrice is a pizza chef now. Oh. Just saying. So if you go to Bill's Pizza, he could be making your pizza. And uh, he learned quite quickly. They're very happy with him after one day. Um, I was just going to add to what Mary said. Um, not only has this community really embraced the refugees, I mean, those of us who are working on the front lines couldn't do it without everybody all in and encouraging us with words and money and help and donations and so on and so forth. I want you to know that this family has worked as hard as we have to accept the town and it's just been wonderful to see that happen. And I thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jackie. I agree. I can't even imagine how hard.
pray for my daughter Elodie, who is sick. Thank you. Prayers for the people in Acapulco, Mexico, who are dealing with the aftermath of the hurricane, and everybody who's dealing with natural disasters around the world and the very long time it takes to recover from those. Yeah, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. The, the rebuild from those water damage things are just years and years. Thank you. Bonnie? As Tanya mentioned, yes, there's a rummage sale this week and we need lots of help, especially today so we can unload the stage. And yes, I know there's a Packer game on at noon. Oh well, we still need lots of hands. We need hands on Monday setting up. And on Tuesday, uh, we need help rearranging piles. There's always work to be done. And the Wednesday at 11 o'clock, it is clean up. We need many hands to help with the tables, to help with our custodians with the cleanup work, and to pack things up and trails, uh, trailers and trucks to help us haul it away. So many hands for this event. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Anybody else with a joy or concern weighing on their hearts? Okay, then I'd welcome us at this time to be in silent prayer um, with God. As I say all the time, you don't have to say it out loud in order for God to hear you and respond and be working in your world. Um, so we take a few moments to be in quiet conversation, and then I'll pray about the situations that were mentioned here, and we'll all come together with the Lord's Prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. So take a few moments to be in silent conversation with your maker. God, our rock, our redeemer, our refuge, our source of strength and giver of all that is good, we come to you today as brothers and sisters yearning to learn more knowing, Lord, that we don't have it all figured out, and that we might be comfortable in our knowledge of you and our work that should be done for you and on behalf of you, if we dug a little deeper, we'd realize probably we need to stretch a little. Try something new, learn something new, Lord. Anything we can do to glorify you and be your hands and feet here on earth. Lord, we lift up the people and the situations today. Our hearts ache for those who are, are without a home because of this devastation or war right now people who are battling illnesses and their bodies are tired. Lord, we, we pray for those who don't have any hope left in their life. Shine some light so they have something to hold on to. We celebrate successes, Lord, like our families here who are growing and learning. We celebrate how we can work together to make things happen in the community. All the projects that are upcoming in this next month are all ways of us to shine our light brightly into the community. Through our highs and lows, Lord, hold our hand. Clap and sing with us when we're joyful, and hold us in your strong arms when we're sad. Because we know your arms are big enough to handle it all. We're so thankful for your steadfast love, protection, and care. And we pray all this when we pray together the prayer you taught us. As we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways we are active disciples is by sharing our blessings with our offerings. We can take care of people here in the church, people here in our city, our state, and even our world. And sometimes our offerings are financial. Sometimes they're that of time. Sometimes they're that of talent. We all have something we can give. Maybe it's even giving more prayer to a certain person or situation. So we're so grateful that we're joyful givers. It's our way of saying thank you for what we have and giving back just a portion of it. So hear this prayer of thanksgiving for our offerings today. Lord, please accept the offerings given here today as a token of our love 
for you. We know that we've been blessed with abundance and that we can share that love with others. Help us to make a difference and be the light in our church community and family, in our city, state, and world. Amen. Our last hymn is a good old-fashioned hymn. So if you grew up in the United Methodist Church, you probably might have this one memorized. Um, but Sweet Hour Prayer, it is number 496. And we will sing it all together. 496. send you forth for a week of looking for a new way to learn and grow and gain new wisdom on how we can serve God. I send you forth with love and send you forth with peace. Amen. Please enjoy the past loop.